Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Discovery Church. If you are joining us for the very first time, we are glad you're here and we'd love to be in touch and we'd actually love to send you a, uh, a welcome gift for joining us for the very first time. And you can just click on the link on your screen and if you don't see a link there, go to discoverybc.org, O-R-G, and click on it there and we'll go ahead and send you something uh, for joining us this first time. One thing about Discovery, there are no perfect people here. So if you're not perfect, you've come to the right church. We wanna put everybody into the right frame of mind, so we're gonna put on some worship music from our band. Uh, sit back, enjoy, soak it in, and we'll be back with you at the uh, message time. Build your kingdom here. Thank you. 
Hey, let's take a moment and pray now. I know we are living in some very uncertain times. Uh, we're getting all kinds of conflicting news reports. Stress and anxiety might be a little bit high. So what I find that works awesome is bringing that to God. So let's take a minute. Let's pray uh, for you. I want to pray for you. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our country. And, uh, and just pray that God uses this whole time uh, to really advance his kingdom. So Father, we are thankful for today. We're thankful that we're able to be here connected virtually, that we have this technology uh, to bring us together even when we can't be there in person. And Father, I just lift up those that are watching right now, those that are a part of this service today. And I ask that you would touch them right where they are, that you would meet their every need, that you would just reduce the anxiety, the stress levels, whatever it might be, that they would have uh, an incredible faith and courage during these times, that that faith would soar, that they would see you at work, even when the circumstances in front of us look sometimes a little bleak, sometimes uncertain, sometimes frightening, and just give us the faith to face every day that comes and that we might know that you are 100% in control. We think of all of our leaders today, pray God for them, that you would bless them, give them wisdom, and help them to lead us as a people and bring us through these turbulent days. We thank you, Father. We commit this time to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
So the only announcement we have for today is if you want to join us on Wednesday nights, we are going through the Gospel of Mark, and that's through Google Meets. Now, if you've never done that, it's pretty exciting. You can tune in. You don't have to put your video on, but you can put your video on. You can see uh, others that are online and you can interact. You can ask questions. So it's really kind of a cool thing. If you want to know how to get into that with us, uh, all you got to do is, is uh, message us right there, whatever, however you're coming through, whether it's chat or whatever you might do, you can message us. We're going to send you the details on how to get into that. Um, and so with no further ado, here is Pastor Jerry, and we are beginning a new series today called The Waiting Room. Good morning, Discovery Church. Hey, thanks for taking the time today to join us online as we worship and as we learn from God's Word today. Hey, do us a favor. If you're... Uh, it, let, let, your, let your host know, let our host know, let the people uh, who are here know that you're here, okay? You can do that by simply, you know, posting an emoji or saying, hey, or hi, or whatever it is in the comment section or the chat section. Um, and uh, listen, we love to connect with you that way. We're so glad, again, that you could be here today. I want to start things off in this new series that we're in called The Waiting Room with a question. Have you ever been to the doctor's office before or the dentist's office uh, and it was supposed to be a quick visit? Have you ever been, you know, what was supposed to be a quick visit? You go there, you uh, get to the office, you check in, you fill out the necessary paperwork and then you sit down in the chair in the waiting room. You know, this is a normal part of the process. Every single one of us expect to, to wait a few minutes for the doctor to see us because usually there's other people there before us. But have you ever been there and you've been waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting and it just seems like an eternity? But I mean, it's, you know, 30 minutes turns into 45 minutes, which turns into an hour. I mean, it's awful, isn't it? Doesn't it get your blood boiling? I mean, hey, don't these professionals know that we got places to go and people to see? I mean, right? I mean, seriously, like, hello, like we just want to, do you ever just like go up to the receptionist and you know, kind of huff and puff and complain a little bit, get all mad, hoping that that's going to hurry things along. I, I know I have. And, and as I've been thinking about this, um, a lot of what we're experiencing today due to the coronavirus and the painfully slow reopening of our state is a lot like waiting in a doctor's office. So I've been thinking about that. What does God want us to do right now as we're waiting, as we're hoping that things are going to get back to normal soon? What does God want us to do? Well, the answer might surprise you. It's really a simple answer. It's a one word answer. It's wait. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to wait. And in this series called The Waiting Room, I'm going to share with you in, in this week and next week uh, how I believe that God wants us to learn how to wait and how he wants us to wait upon him and wait upon his timings. Now, of all the principles in the Bible, uh, this has to be probably one of the most difficult ones to follow because who likes to wait, right? If I were a betting man, I bet a bunch of you, I bet a bunch of you who've ever waited a long time at the, the doctor's office before had half a mind at times to either leave or to reschedule your appointment. Why? Because we don't like to wait. Or I bet you a lot of you have, uh, who have maybe ventured out to uh, McDonald's or to Wendy's recently, you go and you get in the drive through lane and I bet that some of you are probably annoyed because the line's like two or three times longer than normal. Uh, uh, it's, it's crazy. Or maybe some of you, for some of you, I bet you, you know, you like, oh, I'm going to go online. I'm just going to order some stuff on Amazon. I got my Prime membership and I'll be able to get what it is that I need in two days, only to find out that it takes five to seven days to, to get your Prime packages. And it's like, ah, the inhumanity, right? And that's how we... We feel we're like, oh, we don't, we don't like to wait. But yet, it seems like everything that God is telling us, everything that he is kind of like bringing our way is, I want you to learn to wait on me. You see, waiting on the Lord is a very important discipline that we need to learn. We need to learn it quickly. All right, it's critical because God's will includes his timing. All right, God has an awesome plan for you. If you're a follower of Jesus, 
God has an awesome plan mapped out for your life, but he only reveals this plan one step at a time. I know a lot of us wish that God would just show us everything, but I think if he did, we would be overwhelmed uh, with everything going on. That's why he shares just one step, one phase of that plan for us. And and here's the neat thing. When we follow his plan, right, we're, we're obedient. And when we're obedient, we glorify God. And when we glorify God, here's the amazing thing. Guess what happens to us? We become fulfilled. We become satisfied with our life and and with being obedient to God. However, if we don't seek the Lord's guidance each day, you know what we end up doing? We end up automatically following our own course. And as a result, you know what happens to us? We're often confused. We're dissatisfied because we've missed what God intended to give us and to do through us. I was thinking of an example. What would be an example of this? The example would be the nation of Israel. You might remember the story of Moses and how God said, Moses, I want you to go and deliver my people from Pharaoh. And so he goes and there's the 10 plagues and he's able to, they're, they're fleeing uh, Egypt. Moses is chasing after them. They go through the Red Sea and then God is going to bring them to the promised land. And they're traveling for a little while. They're getting really close to it. Now God had said to, to Moses and he had said to his people, listen, I'm going to drive out the people that live in this land. But this land is a land that's flowing with milk and honey and I am giving it to you. Now the, his plan for for uh, getting the, uh, the inhabitants of that land out of it, he was going to send these hornets in. And they were going to chase them out. But Moses and the leaders, they decide, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to spy it out. We want to make sure that this is exactly what God has for us. So 12 spies go in, 12 spies come back. Two say, listen, let's go and get it. This is exactly what God wants to give us. That's Caleb and Joshua. But there's another 10 who were afraid. And they shared this fear with the nation. They said, listen, there, there's giants in this land. We don't think we can go in and take it. And so, so Moses and the nation, what do they decide to do? They decide to listen to these 10 other spies. And because of their, their disobedience, you know what ends up happening? Instead of going in and taking the land pretty much immediately, they have to wait 40 years. 40 more years. Why? Because they didn't follow the plan that God had for them. All right. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about waiting on the Lord and why it's important for us. And so what I want to do is I just want to read to you um, a passage from Psalms. It's Psalm 27. It's a Psalm of David. And uh, he's the one who's speaking here. And I want to read verses 11 through 14. Psalm 27 verses 11 through 14. Here's what the Bible says. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in the smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So David's basically saying here, I would have lost heart if it wasn't for your promises, O God. And so he says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait on the Lord is what what we hear in this psalm. Wait. David, you might know, was a man who was chosen to live according to the Lord's plan and to uh, his schedule. He chose to live according to his plan and schedule. Although, Although he was anointed at the age of 16 to be the king of Israel, he didn't actually become king until 14 years later. Why? Because Saul was alive and Saul was originally appointed king over Israel. Now, God's promise was sure. Listen, David, you're going to become the king. But, but he didn't know when that was going to take place. He had to wait. Now, what's interesting about David and his waiting was that much of the time that he spent waiting, he also spent hiding and he also spent running from King Saul because King Saul got jealous of David and wanted to kill him. And didn't want to have anything to do with him. And so this whole time, while David was waiting, the king wanted to hurt him, wanted him dead. Now, that's kind of interesting, don't you think? Now, David actually had two opportunities to kill King Saul, but he didn't. He didn't do it. Why? Because he said that King Saul was originally God's anointed and he wasn't going to touch him. He knew that. When God wanted David to take the throne, that David would take the throne. 
And he would do so because God brought an end to Saul's life. He wasn't going to take Saul's life. He wasn't going to take that throne ahead of time because he knew that if he did that, it would mess up the plan of God. All right. And so, so what does that mean? What does it mean to wait on the Lord? How did David do that? How, how are we supposed to do that? How did, you know, Elijah do that? How did Jesus do that? How did others do that? Well, listen, what, what is, what does waiting on the Lord mean? Let me just tell you what that is. First of all, waiting on the Lord, right, is active stillness. It doesn't mean that we abruptly stop all our activity and abs- and do absolutely nothing. It doesn't mean that we're just kind of passive and we're just like, uh, you know, just stop everything that's going on in our lives. No, it, it, it's, listen, God's going to bring a change about in our life, but, but he wants us to continue to be productive while watching and waiting for further direction. You know, that doesn't mean that we don't do anything, but it means that we keep doing the things that we know that God wants us to do, but we keep our eyes open and peeled out for maybe, uh, you know, for him to say something to us to either change your direction or, or to reveal something new about his plan for our life. Now, waiting on the Lord also is purposeful, okay? Oh, we often think that the Lord's plan for our lives is on the other side of delay. But you see, in his eyes, the process of waiting is an essential part of his purposes. Knowing this allows us to wait with a sense of direction and a sense of uh, expectancy, all right? Also, uh, God knows, okay, when we're going to be willing and ready to accept his answers in our life. And so if we listen, right, if we listen with our ears open, um, he's going to reveal that next step when we're ready. He's not going to do it before we're ready, but he, when we're ready, he's going to share that. And, and if he decides to delay, we have to recognize that his timing is always perfect and the best doesn't always come too quickly. I mean, think about this. Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years before he, before God used him to deliver the people. Why? He wanted him to wait there. He wanted to learn those things because he was going to spend another 40 years there and he had to lead the people. He had to teach the people. He had to show the people that God would provide, right? The same thing. Jesus, he waited 30 years, 30 years uh, before he started his ministry. All that time was in preparation. All of that time was purposeful. All right. And so this is part uh, of his of his plan. God likes to delay because he likes to prepare us for his plans. David had to to learn valuable lessons. OK, during those difficult years and, and those lessons that he learned equipped him for the future role that he would have as king. And God does the same thing in our life as well, folks. Right. God uses our hurts. God uses our losses. He uses our disappointments to produce the character qualities that are needed to accomplish his plan in our lives. And so whatever it is that you're going through, some of you are suffering right now. And you're wondering, why, Lord? Why me? Why do I need to suffer? Because it's an intricate part of his plan. Some people are suffering. Some people are not. All right, and I, I don't know why God chooses some and chooses other, but, but this much I know, he wants to use what you're dealing with right now. Maybe it's the loss of a job. Maybe it's the loss of your income. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's you know, family getting sick. Maybe it's uh, loved ones dying. God can use all of that. And he will use all of that for his plan and his purposes in your life. Now, here's the thing that we got to remember. We have to remember that God right? His plan, our plan that he has for our life is part of his plan. And there's a bigger picture at stake here. There's, there's something greater than ourselves uh, at work here. And it's God's plan of redemption. He's going to bring to consummation. There's going to be a new heaven and new earth. And, and so we're on that, we're in a trajectory heading in that direction. And so we all fit as little as cogs in in the wheel, all right, to fulfill uh, this grand purpose that God has for all of humanity in this consummation of all things. And so we need to, to understand that. Now, throughout the scriptures, we're encouraged, all right, to wait on the Lord. Whether we realize it or not, whether we like it or not, this is often how God likes to work in our lives. He li- wants us to wait. It's not unusual and it's not unkind, nor an unnecessary hardship is just part of of his plan, all right, that he has for you and for me. So let's take a look at a couple of these verses uh, this morning that speak about waiting on the Lord. The first I'd like to bring your attention to is Psalm 25, verses 1 through 3. Here's what the Bible says. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. 
Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those who be ashamed to deal treacherously without cause. Here, the scriptures teach us that God promises that we will not be disappointed or ashamed when we trust in him. Let me, let me just point you to Psalm 37 now, verses 7 through 9. Psalm 37, verses 7 through 9. Here's what the Bible says. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in the way, because of a man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from your anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. What's God telling us here? He's telling us, do not fret because he is watching over us. Oh, we're, if we were willing to obediently walk with him according to his timing, God would provide everything that we will need. All right. Even if we haven't been following God's plan for our lives, he will pick us up wherever we're at. Listen, you might have been screwing up for a while now. You might have been off track or away from God's plan for a while. But here's the good news about about Jesus. If you will just go and confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, right? And so he's, he's willing to forgive us of, of wasting time. And every time that we do that, any time that we kind of deviate from his plan, God is willing to put us back on track. He's willing to give us a fresh start if we just humbly come to him. Now, all right, here's another verse I want to share with you. It's Psalm 40, verse number one. Psalm 40, verse number one says this, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. What's God saying here? God isn't trying to keep his plan a secret from you and from me. Isn't that good news? He doesn't want it to be a mystery. He doesn't want it to be uh, something uh, that's too hard to understand. No, but he wants it to reveal to us, but he reveals it one step at a time. Again, what's our problem? We want to see the big picture, but the, here's the truth of it. We can't handle the big picture, folks. We just can't. Listen, if, if I knew like beforehand that when Rhea was born, that she was going to be born with a, a medical condition that would affect her life, that would affect our family. And, um, you know, if I knew that she might come close to dying, honestly, I, I don't know that I would have wanted to have children. But because I didn't know, Right? I did have her. She's been a blessing in my life. I mean, she has changed my life for the better and, and in so many like great and wonderful ways. Like she has changed me. She softened me, right? All because of this girl that came into my life. And, it, and that was part of God's plan. But if he had revealed that ahead of time, I would have missed out on this, these blessings that this little girl brought into my life. All right. And so that's why he only he shares one step at a time with us. Okay. And he doesn't want it to be a secret, but he knows that more often than not, we just can't handle too much more than that. Here's another verse. One, one, a new favorite verse that I have is Isaiah 64, verse number six. It says this, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by ear, nor has I seen any God besides you. And I love this part. This is the part I love. Who acts for the one who waits for him. Let me read that again to you because it's so powerful, who acts. We have a God who acts for the one who waits for him. No matter what it is that we're facing, whatever it is that you're going through, whatever struggle or difficulty, listen, you can know, I can know that God always acts on behalf of those who are waiting for him. Waiting for him to do what? Waiting for him to work because he's going to work. He's going to move. He's going to do something. Since God is omniscient, omnipotent, and sovereign, uh, listen, listen, he can do what nobody else can do. And he's always going to do things that are good for, for his kingdom and also good for us. Now, I want to share with you five different reasons God wants us to wait, especially right now. Right? Like, what, what do we, should we, should we revolt? Should we protest? Should we do this? Should we do that? Should we go outside? Should we open up our businesses? Should we just, should we just be disobedient? What does God want us to do? God wants us to wait. Let me give you five reasons why he wants you to wait. First of all, he wants you to wait to obtain his direction. Listen, God's directions are clear. 
All right, not, not knowing the future, we may sometimes become a little bit impatient thinking that we're going to lose out on something if we don't go or if we don't act right away. However, God has planned for our lives, uh, is, is already uh, encircled with our names on it. Uh, there's no way that we can lose it if we will just follow him. All right. He has given us his word and his spirit to teach us and to guide us and to direct us. And when we heed the Holy Spirit's instruction in our life, we will become more conformed to the image of Jesus and empowered to walk obediently in his will and according to his schedule and timetable. Reason number two, we need to wait on the Lord. All right. Why, why God wants us to wait, okay, is because it is to keep us in step with his timing. Okay, I know I've kind of already mentioned this, but God is never in a hurry. God is never in a hurry, church. He has created time and he has planned every detail, every little iota perfectly. However, he doesn't reveal everything to us when we want it. Even when we ask it according to his will and he has given us confirmation in our spirits about something that he wants us to do in our life, we can't presume when it's going to happen. We can't presume. That doesn't mean that, that the promise is null and void just because it doesn't happen. If he has promised it, if he has said it, if he has revealed it and he's confirmed it in your heart, know that it's to be true. Continue to have faith that he's going to do it and just be on the lookout for when he does. You see, sometimes, sometimes he holds back because we're just not ready to receive it. That is when we have to trust in God. All right, here's another reason, all right? God wants us to wait because he wants to test our faith. God wants to test your faith. Listen, we already have all the blessing that God has promised to us. They're already ours for the taking, but sometimes he restrains them until we have more confidence in him. He wants us to believe him even when we can't clearly see the details of those blessings taking shape or form in our lives. There's another reason he wants us to wait. He wants us to wait so he can strengthen our faith. You see, waiting teaches us to walk by faith and not by sight. Trusting in the timetable of God instead of giving into uh, 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 immediate self-gratification. Here's another reason he wants us to wait. And this is a big one. A lot of times God wants us to wait because he wants to sift our motives so he can change our desires. Sometimes, I mean, here's, here's the truth of the matter. Sometimes we're selfish. Oh, hello. I hope that didn't shock any of you too much, but we are. I'm selfish sometimes. And I know you are too. How do I know that? Because we're human. We have a, a heart that's tainted by sin. And so sometimes we pray selfishly only to find out that our requests were off, that they were a little foolish. And so God delays, God's delay gives us time to see things from his vantage point. Now, these are a few of the reasons that he makes us wait. And I know that there's probably a lot more. You could probably think of more. But, but now the question becomes, okay, if God wants us to wait, here are the reasons. This is good for me. How do I do it? How do I wait? How should I wait? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where I think a lot of us, we blow it, okay? It's where our testimonies either shine through or are completely lost. More often than not, how do people respond to, to waiting on the Lord? Let me tell you, when at the doctor's office or whether it's in a grocery, uh, grocery store line or whether we're waiting uh, you know, for a state to reopen, here, here's how a lot of people respond. They're impatient. <laughs> They're nervous, frustrated, angry. Skeptical, miserable, and so are some of you. Some of you, that's exactly how you're responding. Is that a good testimony? No. Is that the testimony that God wants us to have? No. Rather, what we need to do is we need to follow these biblical examples of how to wait. Instead of being impatient, why not we need to wait patiently. Psalm 37, seven, rest in the Lord and wait patiently. For him. Not only do we need to, to rest patiently, but we need to rest quietly. In Psalm 62, 1, the Bible says, my soul waits in silence for God only. Not only do we need to rest patiently and quietly, but how about trusting? Trusting that God's going to work. In Psalm 37, 7, we looked at this one already. Do not fret. Don't be afraid. Don't 
be afraid, but rather have courage, rather have trust in God. Not only that, but we should be waiting expectantly, right? Well, we need to expect that God's going to do something. Psalm 27, 13, I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of God, David said. We also need to wait steadfastly and courageously. In Psalm 27, 14, wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage, God says. And lastly, let me just say this. We, we should be waiting, standing on the promises of God. I love uh, what the Bible says in Psalm 130, verse 5. It says, I wait for the Lord, and in His word do I hope. You see, the wisest thing that we can do each and every single day is to make sure that we connect with God. You know, one of, the, one of the greatest times for you to connect with God is when you first wake up before you even get out of bed. This is a choice that I think that we need to make. If you're gonna, if you're gonna be patient, if you're gonna be, learn how to wait on God, before we ever get started, we need to make sure that we connect to commune with Him. Now, this is what God wants. This is what God craves. Now, although we're already united with, with, with the Father through Jesus, we still need to communicate with Him daily in order to develop an intimate relationship with Him. I want to challenge you folks this morning to do something. I want you to challenge you, you know, going forward, when you wake up tomorrow on Monday, before you get up out of bed, just put your hands together and pray to God. Say, Father in heaven, listen, I... I realize that things are kind of out of control, out of my control, but I know that they're not out of your control. God, I know that you want to direct me. I don't understand. I don't know what's going to befall me today. I don't know what's going to happen to me today, but I know that you do and that you will direct me when you need to direct me. So help me, God, to take those steps. Help me to listen to your voice. Help me um, to know where to go. And I'm going to follow God. I'm going to follow you today each and every step, even if they're small steps, my, my heart's desire, God, is to go where it is that you lead me. Thank you for another day. Thank you that I can worship you in this way and be obedient to you in this way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Right, that's, that's how we should start our day. Instead of only coming to Him in, in, in times of emergency or in times of need, we should begin each morning by asking God to help us to walk wisely, not lagging behind, and definitely not getting ahead of His plan. And when we do so, we will be better equipped to wait on the Lord. So, how you doing with all of this? Have you been waiting on the Lord? If you have, praise Him. Thank Him that you, you've learned these things. If you haven't, it's time. It's time to change. It's time for things to be different. Listen, <laughs> our, our governmental leaders are telling us, listen, uh, you know, when we get to normal, it's going to be a new normal. Well, we need a new normal for us today. And the new normal is, is that as Christians and as followers of Jesus, our new normal should be that we are going to wait patiently for the Lord, that we're going to trust in Him. Listen, we're citizens of heaven first and foremost, folks. We're not, we're citizens of America second, but we're citizens of heaven first. First, and as such, we need to be representing our King, King Jesus. All right? And we do that best by waiting for Him and for His timing, for His plan, for your life, and for my life. Why don't we go before the Lord? Let me pray for you. And, uh, and I hope that you'll take what I've said and what I've shared with you to heart. And that you will not just believe in your minds, but that you will Go forward that you will live your life differently this week, waiting on Him. Let's, Father God, we come before you. We ask you that you would just help us, Lord. Everything seems so out of control. Many of us have lost our jobs. We wonder where the money is going to come from uh, to pay our mortgages or to pay our food bill. God, some of us are just wondering when, you know, uh, things will go back to normal for some of us, when our businesses might be able to open. God, we are just, we are just confused. We don't know what's happening, but we know that you do. And God, help us to trust you. Help us to wait for your timing. God, help us to remember that 
you want only the best for our lives. Help each person, God, who is making the decision this week and today to, to wait on you, to trust in you. It's the best choice that we could ever make. And so I, I know that it's a difficult one. I, want, I know that it's a, a choice that they're going to have to make daily, maybe even multiple times a day, God. But I pray that we would be different, that the people that, that are part of Discovery here, God, that we would be different and that this would be one of those marks that people would see and be like, why are you so patient? Why are you okay? How can, how can you trust God right now? I pray that people would begin to ask us those questions this week and that we could begin to say, because of you, Jesus, and that we would be willing to open up our mouths and to share Jesus with these people and tell them how they've changed our life and how they can change uh, the lives of everybody around them. I pray that you would help us, God, as a church to be able to do that. We ask this in your, all of these things in your precious and powerful name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless. Thank you for joining us today at Discovery. I hope you've really been blessed. And if you have been blessed, especially if you're part of our regular congregation and you're figuring out or trying to figure out how to give uh, because we're not here on Sundays, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. You can uh, do it online, right? Whatever platform you're coming through, uh, you can click on the give button. If not, you can go to our website, discoverybc.org backslash give, and you can give that way, or you can send your checks in, uh, make them out to, to Discovery Church, and you can send those checks to Discovery Church, P.O. Box 465, Highland Mills, New York, 10930. So again, thanks for joining us, and hope you have a blessed day.